Uh, let me just start with some introductions. I'm Janet Mertens. I'm the uh, Senior Vice President, Global Head of Research at the Josh Person Company. I am absolutely delighted to be on stage with three of my colleagues and my friends uh, who are our research leaders and experts uh, who have been studying the, the, these industries. So I'm going to let each of you introduce yourselves. And what I'd love you to do, share yourself, you know, a little bit about yourself, your, your role at uh, JBC, but also talk uh, just for a moment about the industry you are going to be talking about or that you've been studying. Stella, of course, we're going to start with you and you've got two that you're going to be covering for us today. So let's go ahead. Thank you, Janet. Um, welcome, everyone. My name is Stella Iwanidu, the very weird surname that sounds all Greek to you. Exactly that. <laughs> um, I spent a few uh, years, only 15, in uh, banking. So there goes my uh, love for the field that uh, I took on the big initiative of demystifying the biggest uh, talent and uh, business-related challenge in consumer banking. But I also have a different type of fascination about what it means to be a, a consumer and the great disruption that consumer packaged goods companies face, especially post-pandemic. So I've also led our GW research on CPG as well. Wonderful. Thank you. Kathy, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Janet. Um, Kathy Andres, SVP and Global Industry Analyst at the Josh Wilson Company. I'm going to talk about the healthcare industry, which Josh mentioned, which was our first industry. And if you were here late last year, you might have seen when we introduced the healthcare industry, actually in this, in this conference, talking about what we learned about healthcare, just the entire hour about healthcare. This time, we won't talk all the time about healthcare. Um, and I love the healthcare industry because it's not just an industry, it's really a calling. Um, it's really a passion. Um, and I worked in the healthcare industry myself for about eight years. So fantastic. Very, very exciting. Wonderful. And Jordan, last but not least, Jordan is um, going to reveal some of our newest insights from our latest industry on pharma. So Jordan, go ahead. Absolutely. Hi, everyone. I'm Jordan Schmidting, and I'm a senior research analyst at the Josh Person Company. And I led our research on the pharma industry, so that's what I'll be talking about. A little bit about me. My path to HR started with a fascination about behavioral sciences. So I spent a few years studying neuroscience as part of that. And during that neuroscience portion of my life, I spent some time in a neuropharmacology lab where I firsthand experienced a lot of manual processes that turned into bottlenecks that never quite went away, but could have with some automation. Um, and so when I had the opportunity to study the pharma industry here, I was delighted and excited to dive into the industry's most pressing business and talent challenges. And so some of the things that we've uncovered is that the pharma industry is facing industry convergence from multiple angles. You have healthcare and technology ultimately redefining and, and expanding what it is, what a pharma product could be. So there's now digital products that are actually pharma products as opposed to a drug or something like that. And we are also seeing a lot of industry disruption. So biotechnology is a major force of that. Digitization is also a force of that. So what this industry convergence and this disruption is causing is a rapid skills velocity. And the skills that are highly relevant today that are driving companies forward are gonna look different two to three years from now. So what pace that our pharma companies are really investing in is their product and process innovation capabilities. Fabulous. Well, listen, you're hearing it here first on our, our latest insights on pharma. And uh, Josh mentioned at the end of today's session, if you haven't already scanned your badge, do make sure you do so because you will be able to get an exclusive uh, copy of our pharma GWI infographic. So that'll give you some of the findings and our pace setter, um, our pace setter report, which we are going to dig into right now. So as Kathy mentioned, you know, about a year ago, we were here in at HR Tech and we were talking about um, just the one industry, healthcare, which we could spend hours on. What's really interesting about today's conversation, I think, is we are going to be talking about multiple industries and we're, there are unique stories that we're going to share with you today. But there are also some common themes that I want you to be listening for. We're going to unlock some of the secrets or strategies that pace setter companies, these leading North Star companies, what are they doing differently? Josh mentioned a couple. We're going to really dig in and give some examples of what is setting them apart. All right. So without further ado, let's jump in. So in our research, um, you know, and, and I'll, I'll um, I mean, I put this out to Stella first. In our research, um, Stella, one of the things that we noted about pace setter organizations is 
with industry convergence, with pressures and disruptions are being a constant friend uh, for these companies, that um, there has been a need to, and probably among the pace setters, an acknowledgement and a shift in not just kind of the work they do, the products they're creating, but the way that they are organized, the way they're operating. So their business models are changing, their, you know, their operating models are changing. Tell us a little bit, let's start with CPG, the consumer packaged goods uh, industry. What did you see? What's changed about the business model based on the disruption you're seeing in that industry? For sure. Um, we'll start off with, the, with the, uh, the definition of Pacers per se. So needs are a unique organization. It's not so much or a lot like who they are. It's about what they do. So who they are, of course, they are financially successful organizations. They excel in innovation. They excel in their business. They are great or talent magnets. And at the same time, they adopt some amazing, let's say, forward thinking uh, strategies around how they look at talent, what type of roles are prioritizing, what type of skills are prioritizing, how they think of how HR is structured mm -hmm. and how the different HR, let's say, units or departments interrelate. And for example, in CPG, um, which is one of the most fascinating industries I got to study, we see this great change in how the business model of CPG organization is shifting. So it used to be a very straightforward, linear business model where you can make, move, and sell, sell stuff B2B. And now it's completely transforming into the circular value chain that puts the consumer right in the middle. The majority of CPG organizations we spoke to are actually looking to find and advance in the way that they can directly connect to their consumers and ensure that they are creating and they're producing the right product at the right time, distributed through the right channel and this places um enormous pressure on the hr department because when we studied the skill profile of cpg we figured out that the majority of organizations are actually not skills ready looking ahead they the skills that they have are what we say in our analysis declining which means that in five years from now in three years from now they're gonna be they're not gonna be relevant anymore they're not gonna be useful for them to um tackle the challenges that the, they are uh, faced with and at the same time being ready to predict, not just understand, but predict what the market's vibing and make sure that their manufacturing is responsive enough to take on that challenge. Mm -hmm. So we did pick uh, that, you know, you saw that we analyzed the, the data from the Eightfold uh, platform and we did see that unique skills footprint of pay setter organizations who are prioritizing three types of skills skills around technology, mm -hmm. ensuring that they have the tech and the infrastructure to uh, offer whatever digital experience or digital product that is for their clients. At the same time, they have this great product insights, they have a great understanding of what, you know, what um, takes to the customer, mm -hmm. what consumers want to see as product. And at the same time, the third um, part of the chain is like, um, they have uh, tech, they have uh, insights and the data and analytics to not just understand what's going on right now, but predict where is the market going? What are consumers uh, looking to, to buy? The three skills combined is what we call consumer delight capability. And I set up for pace and urbanization from the rest. Fabulous. And what I, you know, what, and I'm going to go to you, Nord Jordan, next to talk about pharma because the story looks a little bit different, but there are some similarities. What's really interesting too, I think, Stella, is that knowledge or that acceptance that pace setters have that it is time to change. It is, you know, that there is no, you can't rest on your laurels anymore. Sure. Jordan, let's talk about pharma a little bit because I think the story is similar in some ways. There are some disruptive forces at play, 